I'm plotting against time, happiness, uh, the bottom uh, line, and GDP, the top line. These are the, let's say, the observed values of GDP and happiness over time. And as you'll know, the short-term movements are positively related. Peak to trough, trough to peak, happiness and GDP are going up and down synchronously. But if we fit a trend line to those data, they're not positively related. GDP is going up, happiness is flat. That's what the paradox is about. The fact that <clears throat> the trends in happiness are disparate. Income goes up, happiness does not go up. But it's important to recognize that those trends <clears throat> are fitted to fluctuations over time, over time where there is, in fact, a positive relationship, okay? So there are, is a positive relationship in the time series data, but it has to do with the short-term ups and downs, not with the long-term trends. And the paradox is about the long-term trends. And in this graph right here is plot what Tom Smith, one of the leading uh, <coughs> survey people at NORC, uh, publishes, uh, published recently in 2015, a graph that shows the percentage very happy in the United States from 1972 on the left hand end of the horizontal axis to 2014. Well, you can see the short-term relationship illustrated nicely for the Great Recession there. <clears throat> and if we fit at the broken line, there's the trend, flat, if anything, slightly negative since 1972. The short-term positive happiness GDP relationship is evident, as is the long-term nil relationship. If we add together the NORC findings from 1972 and my findings from 1946 to 1970 and say, what do the trends in happiness and GDP look like <clears throat> since 1946, essentially seven decades? The happiness trend has been flat over almost seven decades. Real GDP has tripled. I suspect one would infer from this that the paradox is sustained. The time series relationship of happiness and GDP per capita in the United States over the last 70 years has been nil in a period when real GDP per capita tripled. So what do, what do we look at? Well, first uh, I've said well, the countries we want to study have to have at least three happiness observations, and they have to be over at least 10 years. Though we know from looking at the U.S. data that 10 years is no guarantee that you're going to get the trend in happiness, okay? But I'd say 10 years is at least a tolerable minimum to try. <clears throat> and the method is very simple for each country. We fit a trend line, compute the long-term trend in happiness and GDP based on those data uh, as the trend line was fitted for the U.S. in the 1970 to 2014 uh, data. And then we compare countries, okay? And the question is a very straightforward question. Do those with higher long-term growth rates of GDP have, on average, higher long-term growth rates of happiness. Is economic growth associated with the growth of happiness? And I want to point out, uh, my critics and I agree on this approach, both Beenhoven and Sachs, Stevenson, and Wolfers <coughs> do similar comparisons of growth rates, although, of course, they don't have the same data that I'm using now. 
<clears throat> so what are the possibilities? All right, so we have the uh, growth rate of GDP, GDP on the horizontal axis. We have the growth rate of happiness on the vertical axis. And I've put uh, there, illustratively, two sets of countries, country, a set of countries B that have lower growth rates of GDP and a set of countries A that have higher growth rates of GDP. <clears throat> and that illustration here uh, of the situation of a positive relationship, namely the A countries, those with the higher GDP growth rates, have higher growth rates of happiness. You get a positive trend line, a positive regression line. The, trend, the, the time spans of the data for these countries range from 12 to 32 years with a mean of 23 years. <coughs> we have the growth rates on the horizontal axis and the <coughs> uh, GDP on the horizontal axis and the growth rates of happiness on the vertical axis. You can see Korea and China way out there to the right. Uh, they're outliers. We drop them too. Uh, but right now, they're part of the picture. <clears throat> if you fit the trend line, you get almost a flat line, no significant relationship. <clears throat> uh, that slope is such that <clears throat> if you raise the growth rate of GDP by one percentage point for 100 years, it would raise life satisfaction by one-tenth of a point on a 1 to 10 scale. Uh, are uh, focusing on the wrong thing. That what you really need to do is focus on the types of public policies that are meaningful to people's lives, like health care, social security, child care, things like that, that are assurance of jobs, okay? That these are the things that are important and we shouldn't be thinking about GDP as being the thing that we're going to do that for us. What we want to think about is happiness is what we're trying to generate and that you want public policies that are conducive to that. It also is true, I think, that people can make individual decisions where in a society that they've been ingrained with the view that more money makes you happier, they find out that's not true. And that instead of wasting their time pursuing money, they can use their time to enjoy a better family life, to live healthier lives and so on. So my view is uh, <clears throat> the development objective uh, is a false lead and that what we should be doing is thinking about the things that contribute to people's real well-being. Uh, satisfaction with health are fairly favorable being to be their actual health conditions. Uh, my answer is I think <clears throat> What people are, uh, are, are talking about when they're asked about their satisfaction with health is their satisfaction with the provision of health care, whether they're getting attention to their problems. And that <clears throat> where uh, you have uh, people feeling that they are able, if they've got a health problem, to go to a doctor, the doctor listens to them, the doctor says something, that does a lot for their satisfaction with their health. Because what they're really, I think, responding is their satisfaction with their health care. So that's my answer to that. I think their, their health may be bad, but if we're providing services that really are meaningful to people, and I think psychologically do make them feel better, uh, that, that does contribute to their happiness, and certainly to their satisfaction.